What is up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. First of all, I appreciate the love on the last few videos. You guys have um, yeah, really been loving them, so I'm gonna keep them coming. This video is gonna be one for you guys that are kinda wanting to start out with, with running. Maybe you're a guy that's been hitting the gym for 10 plus years, but you're wanting to start kind of a bit of a hybrid journey, get in, the, start doing a bit of running to mix things up. So later on in the video, I'm gonna go through kind of a lot of my top tips and things that have helped me um, achieve what I have. I've ran a sub 120 half marathon, a 36 minute 10K and a sub three hour marathon. So I've been able to yeah, do all right at running and I'm gonna let you guys know how I went about that way, what I did and um, yeah, I'll run through all of it. I started running back in 2018. So I wasn't one of those um, people that just started running through COVID. I've actually started a few years before that, but it was just all over the place and I had no structure, no idea what I was doing. So that's why I wanna help you guys out and try, kind of let you guys know what you should be focusing on and what you might be doing wrong. So we're gonna talk about that later on in the video, but I've just gotten down to Broadwater. We're gonna go for a run to start the day. It's just gonna be an easy run, low heart rate. And yeah, the sun's starting to come a little, up a little bit later. Through, in Australia where I live, the sun comes up in, at the worst time in summer. It comes up at f like 4.30 in the morning. So it's insane. But now that we're moving closer to like winter and the cooler months, it's starting to come up just around 5.30. So it's quarter past five at the moment. We're gonna get a good amount of running in before that sun comes up, before it really starts getting hot. It's already like 24 degrees Celsius. I think that's like around 75 degrees Fahrenheit and like 80% humidity. So it's gonna be another hot one, but yeah, let's get into it and then We'll, um, we'll go hit a gym session as well. We're gonna chuck some music on, listening to, been loving that new Carnival song off the new Vultures album. It's probably one of the only songs I like. It's not the greatest album, I don't think. It's got like two or three good songs, but it's probably one of my favorites. So let's chuck it on. Chat to you guys in a minute. Okay, step one with running, I feel it's like a little bit, a little bit like the gym. You have to leave your ego at home because if you want to come a, if you want to become a better runner, you have to learn to just run at an easy pace for most of your runs. And when someone cruises past you, I used to be one of those people who was like, no one's gonna run past me on a run, but it's not sustainable. So leave your ego at home and just accept that some people are just gonna cruise past you because they might be doing a tempo or speed workout or something. So just remember that. This is one of the spots I usually stop here when I, um, finish up my ride. So my place is about six Ks from here, but where I parked, we've just done three kilometers, but it's just a nice spot. It's got a nice little bench here. And it's just a good spot to kind of watch the sun come up, hits the buildings nicely. It's always nice, calm water here in the morning and some inspiration as well. Some big ass boats here. So, um, really big boats <laughs> so if your goal is to own a boat like that one day that's probably worth who knows probably a hundred million dollars or something then it's a good spot to come but that's not my goal but it's still going to give me inspiration and I love coming and running that'll probably be tip number two 
is to run somewhere that's nice and enjoyable. Even if you got to drive 10, 15 minutes, maybe you can't do that every day. You have to run from home some days, but even on a Saturday, if you can drive somewhere that's nice for a run to get your long run done or something, it's so much better. I'm lucky that I get to run along the water every single day, but well, that way I'm gonna take advantage of it. So let's keep going. We got, well, we've only done three Ks, so we better get our asses moving and get some decent kilometers in. Cause it's starting to get hot, starting to sweat, and that sun's coming up. Let's go. As you would have noticed, ended up on the trails, which I haven't ran on these trails in ages. But we're gonna jump back on the road soon. Just over six kilometers down. So I think we might just do 12 kilometers today. Legs are very sore. And I think we've got a big, big running session tomorrow with the running group. Had a massive turnout on Tuesday. There was like 10 to 15 of us, so it was really good. Good pack to run with, so I think we'll just do 12K or like an hour easy today, and we'll go hard at it tomorrow morning. Had Valentine's yesterday. Me and Katie went to the beach. My nutrition, was pretty much just like cheese, salami, chocolate, a little bit of a few oysters and salmon and stuff, but I'm feeling it today. I just don't have much energy at all. So gonna smash one of these gojels and then hopefully cruise at home. But yeah, I haven't had the best energy levels today. That is the run complete, 12.02 kilometers, an hour, 57 seconds. Pace was 404, sorry, 504 minutes per kilometer pace. I'll put the minutes per, I'll put the minutes per mile pace on the screen as well so you guys can check that out. But let's check out the average heart rate. Average heart rate was 144 max heart rate 155 so that's probably the most steady my heart rate has stayed on an easy run in a long time i think i'm getting much fitter as well just from doing these speed sessions again um, it's just starting to make these easy runs feel really easy and even though it's hot as hell still i feel like the conditions today without that sun blaring on me heating up my body helped out heaps so yeah that was actually well pretty much a perfect easy run to start the day zone two so yeah that's pretty much it oh, knew that was gonna happen <laughs> all right vert so these are the open fit from shocks i think i um had the other ones on last time the open run pro i actually prefer these so i just wanted to mention that um, I'm not getting paid to say this or anything, but I think these are better option for running. Same kind of deal. Um, you can hear your surroundings and stuff, but these kind of come over your actual ear rather than the other ones just sit like in front of your ear. So you get much better noise quality from these ones. So I think these are the Open Fit Pros. And these actually go in a nice little charging case as well. So. If you're looking at buying a pair of the shocks headphones i actually would recommend yeah these ones but again shout out shocks for sending them like i said i'm not getting paid but 
just thought I'd mention that because I did have a few questions from you guys regarding the headphones. But um, that was a good run. Shall see you guys at home. Refuel going down, so I've made some breakfast. We've got some oats there mixed in with some BPN cinnamon roll protein. Then we've just got some strawberries, raspberry and honey on top. There's the honey that we're using. And then I'm gonna show you what else I'm having. So I've got a big shaker filled all the way to the top with water. And we've got a scoop of electrolytes in there, strong greens and strong reds. And then along with that, I'm gonna have all my vitamins. So strong omega, multivitamin, strong joints. And I also have two of these magnesium gummies as well. So that's pretty much breakfast stored, sorted. Then we'll head to, head to gym in an hour or so. We have our pre-workout, endo pump, creatine, and flight pre-workout in there. A scoop of each. We're gonna head to, which gym are we going to? Alice KD. We're gonna go Alice KD and train some shoulders and some abs as well. So, we shall see you guys there. guys we're back home just had something to eat so like I mentioned earlier we're gonna go through I've written down them eight of my top tips to start your hybrid training journey now these aren't in any particular order but let's roll let's go with them so 
like I mentioned this morning, first one I'll mention is I'll also leave them all on the side here so you can see them all. But the first one I'll mention, like I said on the run this morning, you have to leave your ego at home. Everyone when they start running, they just go out guns blazing. They try run a PB every single run. I did it for probably a year or two and it is not the best way to train. It's definitely not efficient. Your body will just get broken down and it's just not the most effective way of training. So 80% of your um, runs, so should be like an easy pace, conversational pace. If you can, keep your heart rate low in that zone too. If you need um, more information on that kind of stuff, then um, my app actually has a heap of information on a lot of this stuff as well. Speaking about heart rate training and stuff, but that's number one. So we'll just say, leave your ego at home, learn how to train properly, learn how to run properly, and then you'll have the energy still to lift weights because you won't be destroying yourself every single day. Second, I did mention on that run is location um, with your running. So it can get a bit boring running. So if you can find a really nice location to run every day, then that's definitely a positive. Next one, just gonna go with find a good pair of running shoes that suits you. Running, the shoes obviously more, most important, but we'll put it under like running clothing and just running gear in general. I've got, I've done a video on some really good running gear a um, few, few months back now, but if you need any help with that, then go check out that video, but stuff like sunnies, good socks, good shorts, it makes a massive difference. And if, if you can find a comfortable kit, a good pair of shoes that work for you, then it makes a world of difference and it actually will help you not get injuries as well, rather than running in some shoes that are beaten up or just you shouldn't be running in. So that's number three. Number four, we're gonna go with nutrition. Now, running and gym, like balancing the both of it, you're probably gonna end up burning more calories than you were before. So if you're a skinny guy, you're probably gonna have to up your calories to maintain that size. If you're happy with where your body's at, but you've got a good amount of muscle that you wanna hang on to, you need to start prioritizing, keeping that protein intake up. Probably might need to bump up your calories overall to make sure that you're in maintenance if you start burning an extra 500 calories a day or something. And if you're overweight, then it might actually be Good to just do the running, keep your calories pretty similar, and drop a bit, a bit, a little bit of body fat. I always usually get my clients to try drop a little bit of body fat before going too crazy with the running, just so they can get kind of in healthier, fitter shape, and then really go hard at it. Because yeah, if you're severely overweight, it's going to be much harder to get a good amount of running in. So number five, don't compare yourself to anyone. So it's easy to jump on Strava, start looking at everyone's time. Even your mate might start out at the same time with running and he might be straight away quicker than you. You just have to focus on yourself. Everyone's different. And also obviously people that are two, three years into their running journey, you can't compare to those people either because they've been doing it for much longer time. So don't compare yourself to anyone we're all on our own journey, especially with hybrid training. It's just about mixing things up and experiencing new things with the running. Number six, separate runs and your lifting. So I'm just gonna tie in with number seven as well, which will say a training split as well that you could go to go with. If you're someone that really struggles to incorporate two sessions per day, then the best training split you could probably do is a three and three. So you're gonna do three days in the gym, three days running, and with the three days running, you're probably gonna do one easy run, one um, speed session with like intervals and stuff, or, and then, sorry, a long run on the weekend. So there's your three runs, and then you can do like a push-pull leg split. So there you got three gym sessions, three weight sessions, and yeah, that's kind of number seven. Number six, I'll go back to that. So separating your running and your lifting. So if you are someone that really thinks that they have it in them and they you have the time to get both of those sessions done, if you can, probably best off to run in the morning and then 
lift in the afternoon. So, and then if you if you don't have time for that, but you still reckon you can squeeze in both, you could always do like 45 minutes of weights and then 45 minutes of running straight after. Obviously, it's gonna be tough if you are got an interval session, but doing 45 minutes easy run after lift and weights actually isn't too bad. I used to do that when I was a bit shorter on time and it does work. So that's six and seven. So number eight, we'll finish on recovery and sleep. So recovery, stretching, things like ice baths, sauna can be good. Sometimes it's a little bit draining if you do it before, right before a big um, workout or something. But yeah, ice bath, compression boots, stretching, you can all tie into that kind of re recovery. And then sleep, trying to get like at least seven, like six, seven hours minimum. Could be good if you could get seven or eight hours. But yeah, if, if you're only getting like four or five, look at trying to improve that and stuff. But you just want the best recovery possible. So when it comes to doing your next session, whether that is weights or or running or yeah, you just want to make sure you're getting the best out of it and your body's re recovering the best way possible. So I'll pretty much leave it on the last one because I don't want to ramble on too much. Like leave it on the let leave it at eight. But that's pretty much it, guys. Hopefully some of those tips help you out a little bit. If you've got no clue at all and you want a bit of a guide. I've got all those type of plans on my app, so the link will be in the description. You can jump on there. Like I said, you could jump straight into a beginner, three three days lifting, three days running, caters literally for everyone. Maybe you're a bit more advanced, you wanna do something five, four or five days running, four or five days lifting, if you got it in you. So everything's on there. Um, yeah, appreciate you guys watching. Hope you enjoyed it and appreciate the love lately. Um, yeah, last few videos have done really well. So hopefully this one, um, you enjoyed this one as well. So that's it. Catch you later.